Hello guys, welcome to Captain Dorja's Armory. This is Captain Dorja. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I did any videos. Uh, I don't really have any reason for having not done it, so I'm not going to get one because it would basically just be full of crap. Uh, but I do have some good stuff. Uh, some, some of it better than others. Uh, but we can uh, take a look at take a look at some of this stuff real quick here. Uh, I want to show this uh, SU-152 battle, uh, it, not because it's a particularly good battle or anything. It wasn't a bad battle either, but because uh, it was fun and, you know, we got a couple of nice boom shots in and that's really what this thing's all about. But more importantly, it was kind of the last, sort of the last hurrah of uh, me and Lynx platoon together. Um, Lynx, just to give, you know, kind of a little bit of history on why this is like a big deal to me is uh um gonna do gonna do a little history lesson here um five or six years ago uh back when i was playing eve online as my you know number one game uh i joined a corporation called rage for order um at that time rage for order was a corp in the alliance systematic chaos and they were holding some sovereignty in the Esoteria region and generally having a lot of fun and, you know, doing good deeds, doing bad deeds, and, you know, just fun was to be had, profit was to be made, ships were blowing up. It was a, it was a grand old time, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you know, Lynx was in Corp, and that, that was a really fun Corp. Like, we had a great attitude, we had good leaders and good people, so it was a good time. And, uh, me and Lynx were like the two youngest guys in the corp, uh, and him even more than I realized. But anyway, also he was way better at Eve than me. Anyway, I digress. So uh, about maybe six months after I joined corp, uh, World of Tanks beta started getting a little bit of notoriety, and there was this guy Scappa that was playing, and a couple of weeks later Lynx started playing. And a couple of weeks later I decided I would start playing because I love tanks. And so, you know, a tank game is kind of perfect for a guy that loves tanks. And uh, I platooned up a lot with Lynx, kind of in the early days there, in closed beta and all that. And, um, you know, we played about, well, in beta I played about 4,400 battles. And throughout that time, you know, Lynx really showed me the ropes and, you know, kind of taught me sort of everything I knew for a pretty long time and and uh, you know it was really really fun we uh, we played a lot of German tanks we played uh, played a lot of Tiger 2's played a lot of IS 3's Lynx had a mouse at the end of beta and uh, the mouse was like a totally different animal back then there were only three tier 10 tanks in the game like the mouse was really 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 hard to kill uh, the Hummel was the biggest artillery the Germans had and, the M41 was the biggest already Americans had. Granted, the, these already used to hit a lot harder because they were top tier, but but uh, you know, still it was a it was a way different game, and it was really fun. And you know, we would do stuff like 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 he would YOLO his mouse into three T30s more than once, and I would you know give him sniper fire with the Tiger II, and we would come out on top. Like it was good times, it was good fun, and one of the things that uh. That we just you know kind of love playing was the SU-152. We call it the boom truck because it is like you just you just shoot people with giant boom shells and they die. It's great. So kind of gonna run down real quick my philosophy on the boom truck gun, and then we'll get into battle. Um, basically, in my humble opinion, you should really only ever use the SU-152 with the 152 mm gun, a.k.a. the boom gun. Now, it only has 135 pen with AP, but that's good enough for almost all the situations you get into. And if it's not good enough, you have AG that'll still do like 300, 400 damage to targets you can't penetrate. And if you get into a real emergency, you can load 250 penetration heat. So you've got options with this gun, and they're all pretty good. Now, the trick is you want to fire AP at everything that you can penetrate and at everything where, that you can penetrate 50% of the time. And I'll show you why I say 50% of the time when we get into battle. Um, but like, let me just give a quick rundown on everything that you can penetrate 
50% of the time with 135 pin. All tier fives, all tier sixes. Doesn't matter, heavy tank, light tank, medium tank, tank destroyer, all of them. You can penetrate all of them at tier five and tier six with 135 pen. And if you don't pen the first one, you'll pen the second one. Tier seven, it starts getting a little bit more wonky. Um, you'll pen the sides of everything with 135 pen. You'll pen the front of all tank destroyers, all medium tanks, except maybe the KB-13. You'll pen all light tanks anywhere. And you'll pen all heavy tanks 50% of the time, except for maybe a couple. The KV-3 is going to give you problems. The, um, the IS, if you don't aim well, can give you problems. The Tiger P, frontally, you're not going to pen it with this gun 50% of the time. Just shoot HE at its front. And the T-29, believe it or not, the front haul on that thing, a good player, can actually make it pretty hard to damage with this with this 135 millimeter pen. So then you got to be a little bit more, more tricky. Uh, at tier 8 and 9, it gets a lot trickier. Basically, at tier 8 and 9, if you can shoot things in the side, you want to use AP. If you, can, if you have to shoot them in the front, you want to use AG. And if it's an emergency, you want to use heat. So that's my rundown on the boom gun, and we're going to take this thing into action and uh, see how she performs. And I will say that this battle was a 9.0 battle, so it's going to be a little weird because uh, you know I'm on 9.1 on my desktop, but I purposely didn't patch uh, World of Tanks past 9.0 on my laptop so that I could record these and uh, play back the recorded video on my on my desktop in order to do this. So it's going to be all fixed camera, no ability to really pause or, well I'll be able to pause, but no ability to like zoom the camera around or anything like that. So it's going to be a little bit different, but hey, we got it, it'll work. So let's take a look at this battle. Alright, so I know this is kind of lame. Uh, basically what we have here is I've recorded this already with Bandicam and uh, now we're just watching back the recording on VLC Media Player. So my, uh, you know, mods are kind of broken and stuff. XVM's not working. Uh, the minimap still works, so which is cool. Um, so yeah, we're here in our boom trucks. I'm, uh, I'm with Lynx. It's kind of the last two raw of our boom trucks, and really of playing World of Tanks together at all. Uh, also, I just realized over target markers aren't working. So you can see for our first shot, uh, I'm loading HE, and I'm loading HE because of the map that we're on. We're on El Halouf. Uh, I'm gonna pause real quick. We're on El Halouf. It's a tier nine battle. There's only uh, two tier nines per team, but the enemy team's got a T54 and a T95, both very heavily armored. So probably targets for HE. They also have a KV4 and a KV5, very heavily armored, probably targets to use HE on. They also have three Tiger twos very heavily armored, probably going to have to use AG. T28 prototype, he's an AG target. The ELC, the T21, the 132, the T44, and the T34, we can use AP on those guys. Um, the ISU, we can use AP on him. If we catch the 28 proto in the side, we can use AP on him. We can AP the sides of the Tiger twos. But anyway, right now I'm loading AG because I'm expecting to get a side shot on a T-54, and uh, I don't know if it's going to be a side shot or if it's going to be a frontal plate shot, so I'm loading AG. I get into position, and you can see we do have a target coming. We fire. On the move, leading the shot, correcting for muzzle drop. We managed to hit the WZ-132 right in the side with our AG shell penetrating and dealing 980 damage. That's 93% of his health. We've left him on 7% of his health. We fire our second shot at him to finish him off, but unfortunately we miss and the Pershing takes him out. So I had a HE loaded to use on that T-54 and I just fired it at the first target that wandered into my sights, but it was not the T-54 but I'm okay with that. We did a ton of damage to him. Fire a speculative HG shell at that T21. Seems pretty obvious that we've missed. You can see behind me there, Lynx is firing. Uh, Lynx is actually using the gun of the IS. Uh, 
you know, Lynx likes to flip flop between the boom gun and the IS's gun. When he uses the gun of the IS, he likes to call it the precision boom truck because because co compared to this 152 millimeter, it's like having a laser sniper rifle. But uh, I like the boom gun all the way, and I'm a pretty decent long range uh, long range shot with it. So I think the just massive derp is better. I also like that using it without without heat is kind of like a it's like such a science that it becomes an art and I sort of I sort of enjoy that kind of style that kind of you know trying to do stuff that other people are bad at I guess I don't know I don't know maybe I'm just an egotist so we're looking for shots don't want to go too far forward because you know it's El Haloof, we're at tier 7. Basically, if anything sees us, I'm expecting to die. I see Lynx getting a hit in on there. I'm not exactly sure what he hit because my over-target markers aren't working, but it looks like the T-44. The T Alright, so I've obviously been spotted. i got shots coming in at me, so time to take cover behind the rock. Now right here, what I'm doing is I'm using the cover of that rock to reposition behind this ridge line so that I can drive down that road. I want to drive down that road because I think I can help get rid of this T-54. Now I talked a lot about how you can use AP a lot in this gun, but uh, the situations that I've been in in this battle so far hasn't really been conducive to using AP ammo at all, so I haven't even loaded a single armor piercing round. Which is a little uncharacteristic of me. I'm like a huge advocate of AP rounds. Okay, so here we go, poking through the bush. We know we're gonna have shots on the T-54. We have a AP load or HE loaded for him. We managed to do 347 damage. That's not bad. Tier seven tank. We just did 347 damage to one of the toughest tier nine mediums in the game. So you know you kind of have to take it. I could have penned him right there with a with AP. But in that situation, I already had the AG loaded. It would have taken too long to reload. So we go with what we've got. Now advancing down the road, I want to shoot at that T-54 again. Except this time I'm expecting him to have his front towards me. So I still have AG loaded. Trying not to expose too much around that corner. Just getting the gun around. Scoping in, I expect the T-71 will detect him soon. So we're scoped in, we're looking for shots. T-71's making a move. We're gonna get lights on that T-54 real soon. We know he's right down there somewhere. We're gonna have shots on him as soon as he's lit up. There he is, and he's front towards us, so we fire another HE, another 343 damage done, and we're gonna load an HE round to secure the kill on this guy, getting the last 8% of his health. And we blind fire, and kill secured. All right, so I'm gonna pause real quick to talk about uh, why I say you only need to penetrate 50% of the time if you're going to use if you're going to use AP shells, and uh, we're using the damage that we did to that T54 as a great example. So shooting at a T T54 with a high explosive ammunition, the high explosive ammunition has 86 millimeters of penetration, and the T54 has 120 millimeter front plate armor. Now I'm going to minimize real quick and open the tank inspector do 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 mr tank inspector please open there we go not sure why it's opening on that monitor but okay all right lay tank inspector and we are going to go over to yield a t54 all righty so here's our T-54 that we were firing at. Look at his armor zones real quick. Now I have 86 penetration on my HE rounds. We can see uh, his upper plate armor, 
It's 120 millimeters thick. So we're never penning it. We're never penning that with HE. We're never going to pen his turret with HE. You know, look at the armor thickness of the T-54's turret. That thing's legendary. The rear of the turret, that's still 108. We're not getting through that with HE. 86, and eh, we're going to get through that 50% of the time. 65, we can pen that. The rear, 48, we can pen that. You know, we can pen that. And we can actually pen the sides. But it's going to be tough with the tracks there. So, that's important to know. Because my first shot on the T-54 was into him in either the rear or the side from kind of this sort of angle from down. And we couldn't actually penetrate. Our 86 millimeters of HE penetration was not enough to get through the rear of a T-54 from above. So if we'd had an AP shell in the gun tube, I could have hit that guy for 700 damage, and it almost certainly would have penetrated. My HE honestly probably should have penetrated, but it didn't. It only did 343 damage. That's not really that good. So it took us two HE shells against the unarmored butt of a medium tank to do the same amount of damage as one armor piercing shell. So the reason why I say you're better off firing armor piercing if you can penetrate 50% of your shots is simple. An armor piercing round from the boom truck gun does 700 damage a shot. 700 divided by two is 350. If you're firing an AP shell and you're bouncing one and penning the other, you're doing as much damage as you are by shooting two AG shells and hitting and not penning with both of them. So that's why I say that. And I would rather hit a guy and bounce and then hit a guy and wreck his whole tank for 700 damage than I would to shoot an AG shell at him and do 350. And the reason why is because shock value. There's a lot of tanks in the game that hit for 350 damage. If you're in a tank, you drive around a corner, you take 350 damage, you kind of go, oh crap, and you pull back. And you go, oh, that could have been, you know, that could have just been an IS. That could have just been a KV-1S. Like, whatever, you know. You're not happy that you lost 350 health, but you're not too worried about it. It's not... On a scale of 1 to 10, that, that ranks like a 6. It's a big deal, but it ain't that big of a deal. There's not that many tanks in the game in Tier 7 that hit for 700 damage a shot. So, you know, if you're driving a Tier 7 or a Tier 8 tank, and you roll around a corner, and you lose 700 health, that's more than a oh crap moment. That's a oh my god, what in the flying hell just shot my tank moment. And the shock value of the oh my god, what in the flying hell moment is much larger. So, you know, that's that's my take. And that's the that you know, that's the reason behind why I do what I do with the boom truck and why I give the advice that I do. And it works really well for me. And uh it's also really fun, and I, I absolutely love this tank. Now, still loading HE, because I'm expecting to see a T95 at the top of this ridge. I'm not going to pen a T95 with AP, so we're just going to try and shoot high explosive shells straight at his gun and break it. That's the plan. Bringing back the Han Solo Cup from uh, a while ago. Yeah, there we go. We got a T28 prototype spotted frontally. He's another guy that I need to shoot AG at. So, good thing we have AG in the tube. This tank's all about ammo management. You want to have the right shell loaded at the right time. Now, that sucked. We just lost 758 health to that T95, and I lost my gunner. In retrospect, I really should have used my repair kit before firing at that guy. My med kit, I mean. So that way I at least would have had a living gunner to make it a little bit more likely that I hit. But I didn't think of that. I fired, and then I medkitted. So not only did I just lose 758 of my health, but I didn't even hit the target. So here I decided to be kind of a little bit of a 
bastard, and I'm loading heat. And I was loading heat to shoot at the T95, but the T28 just gave me a beautiful opportunity. So we blast the heat shell straight into the side of the T28 prototype for 700 damage. That is an exactly average roll. Lynx over there poking at the T95 with his superior rate of fire. Still not having anywhere near enough pen to go through a T95. And with our heat shells still loaded, we're looking to be a dick to this guy again. But he's in cover. We have a dubious shot at him. Dubious, dubious shot. But I don't care. I fire anyway and miss. So yeah, you know, that was kind of my last chance to get some damage in. So I went for it even though I wasn't probably going to penetrate. And at this point, I'm thinking I might get to shoot the T95 again. So I start loading another AG. But the T95 is uh, killed by the Fosh before I'm able to get any action in. So, looks like that's probably going to be it for this battle. We'll see if we can trundle our fat butt up the hill and try and derp the last of the health off the T28. But alas, there's no way I'm going to beat a Fosh in a foot race when he's already got a head start. Especially since I had to go up a hill. And that concludes the battle. So we'll take a quick look at post-game results. Uh, here we are on uh, replays.quickybaby.com. Checking out our post-battle results. So you can see we only hit three targets, the WZ-132, T-28 prototype, and a T-54. But we managed to do 2,491 damage in a Tier 9 battle. Uh, only two Tier 9s, but they were really dangerous ones and a lot of Tier 8s. So nowhere near the worst environment you can get this tank into, but not exactly a friendly one. On like the difficulty scale of the SE-152, I would say that battle ranked somewhere about like a 6 or a 7. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of higher tier tanks, and almost all of them were pretty high armor. So we we're going to have to do a lot of HE and potentially, if you like to throw, if you like to throw a lot of gold, you're going to have to do a lot of heat use. Um, but we did pretty good. Uh, 2,500 damage It's definitely nice. So you can see our shot into that WZ-132. Those tanks have 1,050 health. We hit him for 980 damage and killed his commander. Scout tanks need their commanders really, really bad. So that was a pretty good crit on him. Put a heat shell into the side of the T-28 for 700 damage. And we also broke his turret. So that's another good crit. Pretty much the only advantage of the T-28 prototype is that it's got a turret, and we broke it. So nice. And uh, we put three, excuse me, HE shells into the back of the T-54 for another 811 damage. Uh, to be able to do 811 damage to a T-54 with an SC-152 is a good result. Like, T-54 is one of the worst adversaries you can encounter with, thi with this thing, because it's... It's fast, it's heavily armored, it's well armed, and it's tiny. It is such a small target. With the inaccurate guns that this thing carries, small targets are bad. But we were able to do a lot of damage to him. We also gave him a yellow engine, which is a nice crit, and yellow tracks. So pretty good. Uh, so, you know, sort by damage. Came in third, which is actually really surprising. Uh, our Fosh was doing work, but, you know... Our, our huge alpha meant that we, we actually outdamaged our Fosh. I'm sad to say that that was a kind of a terrible battle for Lynx uh, with the one, uh, 122 millimeter gun of the IS. Didn't really work out quite as well for him, so that kind of sucked, especially since it was sort of our last two raw and it ended up being a bad one. So I don't really want to look at that too much. And you can see that even though I did fire two heat shells, Managed to make a profit of 14,000 credits with premium. And even with a standard account, that would have been a 1,000 credit profit. And that was 2,724 experience doubled. So a nice little bonus to our career experience on this vehicle. Or if you're, I don't know if I was or not, but I might have been converting experience. So 27, 2724 experience to convert is always nice. Fired nine shots, five hit. Um... Looks like one of our hits was a splash. I'm not... I don't know what that is. Anyway, I don't care. That was a good battle. That was a fun battle. And like I said, it was kind of the last hurrah of the boom truck platoon with Lynx. 
So it was a good time and it was a bad time at the same time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll try and get something else out pretty quick here and I'll try not to go on three week hiatuses unless I'm at C because then I can't help it. So until next time guys, just remember, you can never have enough big guns.